multi-level page tables provide a way to save memory in the face of address spaces that are sparse, that is, that may have holes in them. If we consider a single level page table, let's look, for instance, at a 32-bit logical address space and 4K pages. How big is a page table going to be, right? If we use the entire address space, 0, 2, 2 to the 32 minus 1, We've got all these addresses. We're basically using 20 bits to describe the logical page number, right? Because 12 bits are used for the offsets, because 12 bits can allow us to index into the unique elements of 4K. So we have 20, 2 to the 20th different page numbers. So 2 to the 20th pages implies, if we look at our page table, that this is 2 to the 20th high. What's the width here? That is, how big is each page table entry? Well, if we think about it, what do we need to keep track of? We need 20 bits of the physical page number. And we'll keep, you know, 12 bits of flags, let's say. So that means the width here is four bytes. So how big is this? Well, that means basically we have two to the 22, or let's look at it separately, four times two to the 20th bytes used by this table, right? That's the area of the table, which equals, we know two to the 10th is around a thousand, so two to the 20th is a million, so this is four megabytes. So four megabytes is the size of each page table. Okay? But every process has to have a page table. And so that means if we had, for example, uh, uh, you know, a, a thousand processes, which is not totally unreasonable, maybe that's a bit big, let's say a hundred processes, that would be 400 megabytes of memory used solely for the page tables. So it would be nice to be able to save some memory, especially if you had a process that didn't use all of this address space. So what if you had a process that just had, let's say, its code here. It had its globals here. And it had a fairly small heap. And then it stack up here and big unused chunk. So here would be its heap. Growing up, here would be its stack going down. So we put the stack at one extreme end of the address space to give it room to move and to keep it away from the heap. But what that had the effect of doing is making the address space really large, although sparse, because we've got all this unused. And so what we would end up having is just a bunch of entries in here that are just not present, not present, not present, not present, not present. So the solution with multi-level page tables is to actually have two tables. We have one table, which then has a entry that points to another table. So this is the first level, and this is the second level. So instead of having two to the 20th entries here, we might have two to the 10th entries here. And this might be additional two to the 10th. And so if each one of these can point to another two to the 10th, the total number is two to the 10th times two to the 10th or two to the 20th. So we have the same effective number of page table entries, right? Because these are all page table entries. But the advantage is if we have what would otherwise be a page table that is all not present, we don't even allocate the memory for that page table. We would just mark this first level page table as not present. And that says there's no pointer. So we could have 
a bunch of not presents. And so this is the second level page table. So we have two second level page tables. And then what we could have is basically one second level page table that's covering this area and one second level page table that's covering this area. And all these areas would have first level page table entries that are completely empty. So that's the idea of multi-level page tables.